Hey, welcome to another edition of Rev Talk this week as we've got three outstanding guests we're going to present to you again as we continue to do uh, Rev Talk now into the June month. And uh, it's been a lot of fun kind of relaunching Rev Talk. And I was telling Doug just a moment ago that, you know, it's not as fun as Boo-Ray. We get to eat really good when we go to Boo-Ray. So I, don't, I can't send him any food or anything, but uh, we well, I mean, this week we've got, it's Doug Day. Doug McCasey is on the show, <laughs> out of the gates. First man up, and then we're going to hear from Coach Yo in just a moment. Also, Wilson Love from Football Strength and uh, Conditioning. But, of course, Doug from Wintermill, Florida, uh, was 2020 third-team All-American Collegiate Baseball, SEC Pitch of the Week in Week 2. Uh, just did a wonderful job in this past season before it was shut down. 2020 preseason All-American. Of course, 2019 USA Baseball Collegiate National Team member. Got the hat on there. I see, hey, I got you. my hat, Doug. This is the College uh -huh. World Series hat. We didn't wear it as a team, but I bought one. We went out there a few years ago. So, in honor of the College World Series this week. Yeah, I need to get me one of those. Okay. I'll, I'll let you borrow it when you get back up here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, of course, the season was cut short this past year. Uh, the Rebels were really doing some wonderful things. Doug himself was 3-1 and one at the point that the season ended, 2.35 ERA at 31 strikeouts and 23 innings. And, uh, man, to begin with, just great to visit with you. Where are you? Are you at home? Florida? Yeah, I'm at home in Windermere. I'm actually planning to head up to campus this Saturday because a lot of the guys are getting back right around now, but it was like kind of short notice, so I'm planning to leave this Saturday. Okay, cool. That'll be fun to get you back. So did you finish up spring semester online like all the other students? Yeah, I, I finished up um, on spring. I got a 4.0 this semester. Best, best GPA of my college career. Happy awesome. about that. But, yeah, all finished up all online. And you said your mom was in the background. I didn't hear a cheer then. She should have cheered, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations. That's, that's awesome for sure. Uh, and I see fishing poles in the background. Everybody in Florida's got fishing poles in the house, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm about just pond hopping. It, it's been – this the weather this week's been really bad. It's been raining a lot, so – Changes up the fishing a little bit. My my buddy actually just got a John boat, so starting to start trying to fish in lakes instead of ponds. So we're switching it up a little bit. Getting well, better. Like I mentioned the College World Series would have been this week, and of, of course, like we're talking about, Ole Miss was having a fantastic season. Question to you: Would Ole Miss be in Omaha this week? Hundred <laughs> percent. I just saw this morning that Ole. Uh, Ole Miss Baseball posted a picture of um, us in the Super Regional in 2019, and I was like, man, if we – I mean, if we just had one game back, we would have been there that year, and then we could have been there twice now. So, would have been yeah. good. No doubt. Uh, how good, Doug, was this team? I mean, you've played a lot of baseball, and I know you're young, and there's a lot of baseball in your future to go, but you played on multiple levels. You played on national teams you know, elite teams, just this team. I know it's a small sample size, but gosh, you had to feel like this was really special. I mean, this team, the te this team that we had, it was like, we can, I feel like we just played and we, as Coach B always says, I felt like our, we never even had the best nine because I felt like we kind of just put everybody out there and everybody was playing at all times. And it was just, and the fact that everybody could get in there and there was no like, kind of bickering or anything like that for like playing time or anything like that it was just so pure and awesome at that point in the season and it was just like we were playing so well and it was it's easily one of the best teams I've ever been on and it was it was before the SEC slate started that we had to shut down mm -hmm. LSU was coming up we we're fixing to crank things up in the SEC and there was so much excitement about the potential of the league now we know it's a humbling league and you can't just start for counting sure. wins you know, when you get to SEC play, but you guys had to feel really good as it was about to start up. No, oh, for sure. I mean, going into that weekend, we had as much confidence as anybody in the league. Certainly most people, I mean, most people in college baseball started to look at us and really kind of think past that all uh, started to look at us into the SEC like um, season and stuff like that. And they kind of saw us doing pretty well at that point. So, I mean, going into that, we had as much confidence as everybody. Doug, let me ask you this. Now, as a fan, I'd love to just 
go back two months and start it up again <laughs> and say, okay, we got this virus over with, let's go back to where we were. You know, we can't do that, but can we recapture it is the question. And when you look at the pieces that are coming back, of course, we're pulling for our guys in the draft. You never pull against them, but depending on how the right. draft turns out, we might be almost totally intact. Mm -hmm. I, I think we, there's so much of this team that I think I learned so much, uh, maybe not being like a, maybe not being a captain, like a full on leader, but I think I learned so much from this past season on how, how to create that environment of success and how to win. And that's, and how to create that environment, especially with young guys. Cause I mean, once again, we bring in a whole other class of young people and instead of making them very like super nervous to play or anything like that, kind of letting them be great athletes and letting them just be who they are. And I think we did that so well with last year's freshmen. And if we can, recreate that and have great leadership again, we're going to have another great team. I mentioned the, the draft and um, it's going to be short and this year starts uh, this week. Actually, we're, we're recording a couple of days or day before the draft, uh, but it's always an important time. And I always think about our program, Doug, that if you've got guys that, you know, the major leagues are looking at, that's a good thing. That's how you be uh, successful and sure. all. Just your thoughts in general about, uh, the Major League Baseball draft. There's going to be a future that you'll be watching it intently with your own name uh, down the road too. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, honestly, it's, it's, I mean, it sucks that we have to lose our teammates, you know, but I mean, I think it's awesome that we get to showcase how great of a university, how great of a program our, t our players are on like a higher level. So, I mean, it's a super big night for everyone. It's just the beginning for a lot of people in their professional careers. So, you know, my hope to go out to everybody that's going through it. And, I mean, oh, I would love to be there one day. Who knows? We'll see. Coach B, National Coach of the Year this week. Like I said, it was a small yeah. sample size, but I bet you're not arguing with that, right? No, not at all. I, I, I was I, When I saw that this morning, I was like, I'm surprised he doesn't get every single year. I mean, he like he's – and I, I feel like I even – everybody loves Coach B, but I feel like as a player, we don't give him enough credit for how – well, how good he is at just bringing together that culture that we were talking about earlier, of just that winning culture. And that's something that you can only get from being in the, being the SEC for so long. So, I mean, totally deserved, super happy for him. How detailed oriented is him? I mean, I know that answer. I'm, I'm with you guys all the time, <laughs> but it seems like it's one of the keys to success. Yeah. Um, just like um, he, I think he sent us a list the other day. He said, it said the 10 things to succeed without having any sort of talent. And I think that's kind of part of who Coach B is. He's going to take whoever you are, and it, it doesn't matter, big, tall, strong, like anything. And he's going to make you the best version of yourself. And um, I think how, why he's so good at that is because he looks at every little piece. Nothing, no stone goes unturned. And I think it's a huge key to our success as a program, especially him. Yeah, and, you know, Doug, you think about baseball, percentage-wise, it's a failure-type sport. I mean, you know, you hit 300, that's 70% of the time you're, you're not hitting well, so to speak. And same thing, you know, with pitching mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and the whole nine yards. So I would think he's right. always seemingly got your back, that he doesn't worry about the failure as much and emphasizes the success in the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's he's always done that, and I think – a good, I mean, a good representation of that is when we're uh, just like pre games when we'll see like a highlight reel of like our success, and he loves to put success in front of us and say this is this isn't something that it just happened that one time. It's kind of the norm is success, and we want to recreate that every single weekend when we step on the field on Friday night and everything. So, yeah, he he loved he doesn't really dwell on the negatives, which is awesome. You personally. You're, you're a phenomenal pitcher. It's fun to watch you pitch. I absolutely love it. But in your mind or, or in your heart, what are some things that, that you think you could do better, become even a, a better pitcher? Um, sir, I mean, certainly. I think for me, one of the biggest things that I've always wanted to focus on, and I, it was my focus a lot of this offseason, was to not – to work hard and train well when you're not getting the result that you want. So I think a lot of times for me, I like to – and a lot of times even when I pitch, when I'm kind of rolling through hitters and I'm kind of doing well, I continually continue to do well. But one of my biggest things that I want to work on is what happens when I hit a road bump, you know. Maybe I don't get the success or anything that I want. And still being that pitcher that we need on the mound, 
even when things aren't going well. So one thing that I've kind of worked on, and it's been a great time not being around anybody, not doing anything. It's just, you know, can I still work hard? Can I still train the best to the best of my ability when nobody's looking at me saying, great job, Doug, you're doing so well, you know, so that's kind of what I've been working on. And hopefully I want to carry that into the spring. So then I won't need 10,000 fans to get me going. I can just do it on my own. No doubt. But it is nice to have the 10,000 fans though, right? Oh, it's, that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, 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 the shrug shoulder deal. Where'd that come from? That came from Coach Lafferty uh, changed my pre-pitch routine because I kind of want to – I mean, I came into the program and I'm just a kid who got on the mound and started throwing. And then I came in and he was like, all right, you need to have a pre-pitch routine. You need to have a time when you're going to breathe before you pitch. And I thought – he was like, take a big, deep breath, relax your body. And for me, I was, I was breathing, but I felt like my body wasn't relaxing. I was breathing, I was going <sighs> – and then nothing, nothing was going on. So I started kind of rolling my shoulders before I, while I was breathing to kind of relax myself. Otherwise I get too uptight and then I don't pitch as well, I think. Hey, I got a great idea. Let me show everybody. This is my uh, Morgan Freeman bobblehead, okay? <laughs> we need a Doug Casey bobblehead, but not the head. Head needs to stay still and we need the rolling shoulders of the bobble. What do you think? <laughs> That would be no, that would not, that would work. That'd be great, wouldn't it? We need to call oh, marketing. When you get back to school, we'll go over to marketing. Yeah, I'm, I, we'll get it done. We'll just do little rolling shoulders. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey, it's great visiting with you. Looking forward to seeing you in person again, and uh, uh, hopefully we can get back to to normal and get this virus solved and have a complete baseball season next year. Yeah, for sure. Can't wait. I'm so happy I got on here. I'm, can't wait to be back. Thank you, Doug. All right. See ya. Doug Nikasey. When we come back on RevTalk, we visit with Coach Yo. That's next. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Mom! Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. Question, would you rather refuel while earning Exxon and Mobile Rewards plus points on every gallon? Or would you rather refuel while sitting through my sales pitch for an exciting new timeshare opportunity? Interesting, you'd prefer the points. Well, that's proof. People prefer earning and redeeming with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus over owning a condo that's actually my shed. Earn points in-store and at the pump with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus. Sign up today. Terms and conditions may apply. Available at participating Exxon and Mobile locations. Right now is the best time to upgrade your appliances and lower your energy bill with smart choice rebates from Atmos Energy. As an Atmos Energy customer in Mississippi, you'll save up to $450 when you buy select high-efficiency natural gas appliances. So use less energy and help keep our planet green. Call 877-616-6267 or visit atmosenergy.com slash smartchoiceMS for details. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. We need the fans, alumni, former players all united and everybody on the same page, which is to win championships. We didn't come here to be good, all right? That's not why we're here today. We came here to be great. Hey, Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the bot Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. Having the right equipment is critical for any successful farm operation, and we can help with that. Your focus is maximizing production. Our focus is trust and loyalty. I'm Bobby Spinks with Mississippi Land Bank. If you make your living on the farm, this is your place. Since 1916, Mississippi Land Bank has worked alongside farmers and farm communities in North Mississippi. Whatever equipment upgrades you need, this is your place. Visit us at mslandbank.com. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Rev Talk, here's David Callum.
Hey, welcome back to Rev Talk. Had a chance to visit with Doug Nicasey, one of our outstanding student athletes. And here in our second segment throughout the uh, relaunch of Rev Talk, we've been meeting a whole bunch of new coaches. This is not a new coach. This is an existing coach. So we've been <laughs> sprinkling them in too. So we're so excited today to get to talk to our head women's basketball coach, Yolette McPhee McEwen. And hey, Coach Yo, what's going on? Hey, shaking and moving. We're back in the office, as you can see, with my backdrop. So I'm excited. You know, uh, we got in on Monday, and I felt like a freshman in college. I was just <laughs> so excited. All the coaches were excited. Um, obviously, we didn't get the hug, but, you know, it was good to have that energy and have everybody back. That's tough for people like you and me. We're both huggers. Yeah. I, I love to high five and hug. I don't know how I'm going to yeah. deal with this. When we're I, all know I know it. I know it. The coach Yo's in her third year coming up and, uh, yeah. of course, uh, is is in charge of our women's basketball program. She and her husband, Kelly, have two daughters, Yasmin and Yuri, and uh, you know her her background and her bio. But let me ask you this, because I've asked a lot of coaches this. What's it been like, you know, sheltering at home with the kids all the time? That's a unique deal that a lot of coaches don't get to do. Yes, there have been some highs and lows. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what? <laughs> it's been, uh, for me, as a mom and a nurturer and with da daughters, it's yeah. been great, you know, just to be able to – be around them, spend time with them, uh, comb their hair, make sure that, you know, they brush their teeth. You know, dads don't think about that kind of stuff. So hundred <laughs> percent right. We had two daughters too. Mary and I had two daughters and I was, I was the failure side of the yeah, uh, relationship yeah. for sure. You know, it's yeah. funny that you bring that up though, because I thought about my two kids and they're grown and they're out of the house. And one of them comes back and sees us a lot during this time period, which is really refreshing and nice. But, uh, I think about all my travels all the years and how nice it would have been during this downtime if they were younger and in the in the house. So. Yeah, it, it's been great just spending time with, you know, I became a first grade teacher, a, a kindergarten teacher, like, and then, and then for my husband, it's, it's, it's been good just to be able to spend time with him because you don't realize how much you're away. Yeah, that's exactly We're right. away a lot. <laughs> A whole lot. No question about it. Hey, look, we're going to talk some basketball, but I want to okay. get your thoughts about current issues that are going on. Obviously, the, yeah. the incident in Minneapolis was horrible and yeah. sparked a lot of conversation, a lot of protest. And, mm -hmm. and from a local standpoint, one of the things that took place was the Unity Walk. Yep. Tell us about it and why it was important and why um, it, it, was, it was such a success. Yeah, you know, I... I I get a lot of questions about it because obviously I'm in the state of Mississippi and the past is, has not been as glorious right. <laughs> for uh, black people, you know? Um, and so in not, in not any of the Confederate States, so to speak. So that's like the SEC, but um, I'm just, I, I'm just really grateful for our leadership with uh, Chancellor Boyce and, and Keith. They've just been, awesome as far as making sure our student athletes have support and staff. You know, this is not one of those isolated situations where you can say, we're going to do it for the kids. No, we have to do it for everybody because we're trying to build a, Keith is trying to build a healthy uh, athletic culture where it's diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. um, and so right now the matter is black lives. You get what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. Um, them supporting that and just being there and having the unity walk, bringing everybody on the same page, allowing people to have a voice and just know that they, they, you know, their voices will be heard. They will be supported. This is going to be a culture that is positive. It was encouraging uh, for someone like me who's had like a tough past two weeks, you know? Yeah, no doubt. And, and you think about the statements that are made. There's a lot of statements and yeah. there's some good statements. I mean, yeah. you know, but statements need action. And that's what I loved about Keith's statement Yes, was that, you know, we've had these, I don't want to call them flare ups, but these incidents mm -hmm. and everybody gets angry, black, yeah. white, everybody. And yeah. then we, we kind of walk away when we say, yeah. you know, we got to get better, but then there's not really action. I love the fact yeah. that Keith added action. to his Yeah. Well, well, I think the, the, in the situation we're in, you know, we're in a pandemic 
And mm -hmm. so um, I think that's why this has even gotten that much attention. I, I just know for me, we, we've been in the office since Monday and I've been able to just focus on getting the program ready for where we're right. trying to go and move and move and move. Well, that's how our lives were 24 seven. So had something like this happened and we weren't in a pandemic, I don't know that it would have gotten the mm -hmm. traction. So like this is, you, you, it's like when you have downtime and you really think things through, it's like an off season. The world was in an off season. You know, they witnessed mm -hmm. this horrible uh, uh, murder. And, and so now it's like perfect time to address it and put in self-reflect, self-analyze and put in things to make sure that the culture is one that's um, inclusive of all. Yeah, no doubt. Let me, let me brag on you, Mitt, too, with your statement, because uh, you released a statement. It's really good. And you talked about, yeah. you used a scoreboard analogy, which I thought yeah. was perfect for sports. <laughs> I mean, you coach know, like, coach like, <laughs> coach speak, but that's, it, it's great because you are working, all of our coaches work hard to get our teams as good as they can to put points yeah. on the board. I mean, that's what it's all about. Yeah. So if you bring it into the real world, world you know, analogy of the racism issue, yeah. we got to work hard so we can yeah. put points on the scoreboard for justice. I love yes. that. Yes. Yes. And I and I felt like <laughs> I felt like sports minds would relate to that. Yeah. Um, usually when I talk, I, I end up talking in basketball terms or sports <laughs> terms anyway. Um, and so I, I thought that that just made sense. And, and really, I know that Ole Miss gets a lot of flack, but I've been proud of the positive movement. You know, I've talked to alumni, like I'm talking about 30 years removed, and and mm -hmm. and their pride in saying, I mean, and this is like white and black alumni saying that this would have never been okay to have these discussions. I know I was talking to <laughs> Dickie Scruggs, uh, the other day, they, and he said, the last time we protest is because we wanted bear on campus. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so he was just talking about how proud he was um, for us moving along. And, and then it's, it's necessary, you know, right. it's necessary. Um, and, and, it, and this is preparing things for the generation to come. And I've been excited about Generation Z, uh, mm -hmm. Generation X, Z, Generation I, Y, Millennials. I'm, I'm, I just made the cut for Millennials, born in 82. So just been proud because it just makes me feel good about where we're going for my kids. Yeah, no doubt. Absolutely. And, you know, I think, too, Coach Joe, in the sports world, and you, you, I'll just get your thoughts, we're, we're ahead of the curve a little bit. Absolutely. I mean, we Absolutely. really are. I, I'd like the world to kind of adopt some of the things yeah. we've done. So well, <laughs> we are, but, but again, like what I've been educating myself, like I, I, I've used this opportunity to educate myself too. Uh, we are, but we're not. I think mm -hmm. that sports gives you a way to not talk about it right. and be unified in a sense. But what I've come to learn is you may be unified for those two hours, but for the other 22 hours of that person's life, reality is what it is. And so, um, but that, that, I mean, everyone knows Olympic sports brings people together because mm -hmm. it's something common. But what I love about what's going on now is leaders, coaches, everyone has had to self-assess and say, have I really, you know, been um saying what practicing what I preach and as coaches right. we say all the time to players you got to be uncomfortable and and if you're gonna in order to grow well this is an uncomfortable time mm -hmm. for many you know and and but it's necessary and it'll move us forward yeah and I, I've heard that word used a lot you know uncomfortable conversations you and I are having a great conversation I mean yeah. <laughs> I don't feel uncomfortable at all in the conversation. Well, well, it's, it's but we need to get to the point where the uncomfortable is comfortable. Exactly. And and I think that's what Keith, I know that's what Keith wants to do. Like I told him, um, it's like mental wellness. I know you had Josie on here. And, mm -hmm. and I think with COVID and everything, that's going to be something that's going to be prevalent in our 
in everyone's life, right? Because we've all been stuck in a house, isolated. It's unnatural. Um, but, but I can tell you this. I, for me, I want to make my program an environment where they don't only feel like they need to check in with their inner peace, their thoughts, their breathing when something's wrong. I want to make it a culture. And mm -hmm. so that's what Keith is, is focused on, making it a culture where it is comfortable to have those conversations. And, and, and it's uncomfortable because there is a, as you get educated about your past, I don't care what it is, right? Mm -hmm. There is an embarrassment. Like, you know, if, if it's like, it, it's like some white people are like, I cannot believe there are people in my race that think this way. You know what I mean? Right. So right. It's a, it, it's, it comes with a shame. It comes with, that's what makes it comfortable because like you kind of want to say, but I'm not like that. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 but this is a situation where you really can't make it about you. You have to just make it about the situation and how we can move forward and be better. And as leaders, we all have to strive to do that every single day. Well, and you, you, you've you repeated, I think, a quote uh, that's been great, and it's it's not black versus white. No. It's all of us against racism. I mean, and injustice, point. absolutely. It's all of us against racism and injustice. And just like you probably felt when you saw George Floyd get murdered, mm -hmm. if anyone that has a heart felt that, I don't, I, I don't think that only black people were upset. <laughs> you Absolutely get what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, people in my neighborhood, uh, my next door neighbors, they're not black. They were upset. They were sad. They were sick. And, and, and it's just bringing attention to something that really needed to, to take place. I know for me, as a black person, um, I, I support the police. I, I think they're necessary, but there is an uncomfortability when it comes, when I see them, you know, mm -hmm. when I'm driving, when I'm out, you know, so that's, that's a reality. That's our reality where, uh, you know, if, if you see a police drive by, right, you may think, oh good, they're checking out the scene. I'm thinking, are they coming to harass me? Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's my reality. And I'm a coach. And I don't break any, you know, I, <laughs> I'm a law abiding citizen, but, but there's a real fear or uncomfort for me when I, when I see them. And, but this is, like I said, this has been a great situation. I have a police officer that lives in our neighborhood and, and, um, I, I am making it a point to go meet with him to say, hey, you know what, when I, when I run, because my husband and I, we run a 5K once a week, and we run by his police truck, and I, and I can't wait to see him to say, you know, there has been a, an uncomfort, uncomfort for me when I come by, um, because I think there are a lot of triggers, you know, when mm -hmm. I see a cop car, and, and I kind of want, I don't want to feel like that, so can me and you have a conversation? Absolutely. And that's the action we're talking about. Intentional right. conversations, discussions, and exactly. um, so we can get some reassurance for sure. Exactly. Hey, thanks so much for talking about that. Yeah, I know that it's, absolutely. you know, it's important right now and, mm -hmm. and all. Okay. We got to jump some hoops. So we got to talk some hoops. Okay, good. All right. So the staff got back together. You know, my, yep. I saw your picture you put up with you guys trying to social distance. Yep. And I love your table, by the way, you got, you got the basketball goals on both. They got your mask and all this. Yep. You know what I noticed? I noticed our mentee was like hugging the goal, you know, <laughs> down on the other end of the table. She's always about trying to get to the goal and score, you know, but uh, <laughs> that was kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's a replica of, of our basketball court in the pavilion. So, oh, neat, neat, neat. Hey, yeah, you've added I, a staff member. Talk about Shay. Yes. Okay. So Coach Shay, oh man, you know, we, we've done really well in the off season as far as recruiting is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, and Coach Shay is, is one of those that I want to brag about from Maryland. Um, the, the six years he's been there, they've won five championships. It was important for me to bring in someone with a championship pedigree. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's, he's worked with 
countless prof uh, pros have played in WA and professionally, and uh, and he he just he's a winner. I felt like um, you know going into year three, this is a special year for us, and I wanted someone that had won at a high level. Uh, that had developed players at a high level and that would just bring a different perspective for us to get us where we need to go. You got to be really pleased with the efforts in recruiting and, you know, improving the roster. I mean, we, we finished first in the SEC. We're going to be in the top 15 or better nationally, it looks like. And, and uh, so in steps of trying to get this program back to where, you know, it needs to be, you got to be really pleased with, with the talent that's coming in. Yeah, I'm blown away by it. You know, I I don't know that anybody, we also got the number one, according to ESPN, the number one transfer mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in the, in the off season. And I mean, she's, she's, she's next level. I've already had multiple WNBA coaches reach out and say that I, I guess they'll be coming to Oxford. And so, <laughs> Bring and them all. so yeah, you're right. Right. Um, you know, it's it's incredible and and we feel just humbled by the fact that we were able to do that um with the the record we've had and but but we have never lied to our recruits we they know that this is a bill they're excited about it that's why they're coming you know we have two young ladies that sat out um we we already have in the 21 class we already have uh, two commitments, and so verbal commitments. Um, and so, like, for us, this is a step in the right direction, you know. And I'm, I'm excited for this season just for our players to be able to really uh, show what they've been working on. And so this year for our staff, it's called the proof of concept year, you know, like oh, – yeah, it's important. Like year one was foundation. Uh, sorry, year one was assessment. Year two was foundation. And I know it did. It's like building a house. Mm -hmm. Like you, you don't really know what's going on, but you see it going up, right? And so, right. but but you don't realize how beautiful it is until they put the paint on it and stuff like that. So, despite our record and our season, we were constantly building a foundation that was steady for us to stand on. All 15 of our student athletes with a 3.0 GPA. Three of them with a 4.0 GPA. You know, highest GPA um, in the program this semester. Community service awards, mm -hmm. top recruiting class. I mean, <laughs> that's a foundation. So like all we have to do now is win. And then, and then you have a program that is built to last. And so we're, we're looking forward to, to playing this season and getting out there. And, and I think the fans will be excited. We'll look so much bigger and longer and <laughs> <laughs> athletic. And people will really have a chance to see how we play. In the last two years, you really hadn't had a chance to see it because it's kind of been a hodgepodge. I've just mm -hmm. been, like, trying to make it work. We really sought out <clears throat> to get these young ladies and the ones that that stayed. We're excited. We're excited about bringing them all together. It's going to be a different, fresh, and an exciting product. You know, I think you're in position too, Coach Joe. This is just DK's opinion, but I think you're in position because of the fact that even through those those tough times, to a degree, you've stayed positive. The staff stayed yeah. positive. Kids have played hard, so you've already installed that exactly. part of the program. Exactly. That's, that's the foundation I'm talking about. Like how many, let's really, how many people would be able to go through the season we went through, not win a game, show up, practice hard. I mean, we would have, we would have uh, color analysts say, man, you would think you all are playing, you know, together at large here, you know, right, right. losing the way we did versus Tennessee, then going on the road and only losing by 11 points, you know, one game here, one game there. That's why I'm just so proud of the work we put in. And, and, and this staff, 
BK, we've been working our butts off. Yeah. And okay. so, uh, because that is the, that was the job, you know? And I was naive enough to think that I can do it. And that's good. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes with too much wisdom is a bad thing, you know? <laughs> but, but I'm confident with uh, the way that it's being built. Keith is, obviously. And, and, and um, I'm excited to see where it goes. I just think that this program was to a point where it really needed a chance to have consistency, um, to be able to build it in an organic way to last. Right. You know, I do think we can win a national championship here. Are we going to do that next year? Probably not. But I, but it's doable. So I'm excited to see where it's go, where it goes, and I plan on being here for a long time. Yep. You know, I saw the Kansas uh, deal with the SEC Big 12 Challenge, and it, yeah. it, it flooded back to me because we played Kansas the first time in Aruba all oh. those years ago. I was the play-by-play -play guy, so I got, as a young kid, I got to go to Aruba. Oh, uh, wow. And, and we, we played Kansas, and I think we played them again one other year. But that's going to be kind of a neat uh, – yeah, a matchup, and we're looking forward to the schedule and seeing how we can play. Yeah, we were we were going to the um, Bahamas, but with COVID, a lot of the teams pulled out, and so we had to cancel. And so now we'll be going to Central Florida. I said, look, we got to get somewhere warm, so <laughs> we're gonna go down to Central Florida. Who who doesn't like Disney, right? And right, um, right. And but we're getting ready to release our schedule. Um, when the ink dries, probably in the next week or two. Let me, before I let you go, let me ask you this. Um, I, I've been interviewing in the, in the third segment of Rev Talk, all these people are involved in the health and well-being of our student athletes, conditioning and strength. And yeah. I've just been super impressed with their plan, what Shannon kind of has led them to. Yeah. What, yeah. Are you, what is your reaction to how they handle your, your women? Oh my gosh. I just think I, I've texted Shannon. I've told him I'm just so impressed. His 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 poise during this whole thing is his plan to action. Um, I mean, thorough the thoroughness of it, the detail. You you know they really did a phenomenal job. The people at UMMC, I went and got my COVID testing. They were great. Um, and, and and made me feel comfortable to be able to get on the a Zoom call with my parents and assure them that necessary steps would be taken mm -hmm. for their kids' safety. Obviously, we can go outside and touch a door handle and then get COVID, right? But but one thing I love about what Shannon and and our leadership has done, there are no shortcuts. Um, and we're taking it seriously. If I leave my office, I have to wear a mask. Um, and, and, and that's important because I don't think that we're past this. You know, I know a lot of people are out protesting. I've done uh, several ones here in Oxford, but, but we have to be safe because this is not going away. And, and I'm just grateful for the whole group. They've just been phenomenal. Well, thank you for that. I, I felt that way, and I just kind of wanted to get reaction from uh, the coaches and all. Yeah. Hey, listen, great to visit with you. I hope I didn't keep I you too long. Say, I know you did. No, this was great. No, this was fun. I, I just, look, I hope we can get fans because I always say, you know, the saying is if you build it, they'll come. And, and <laughs> I just think people, you know, we got two All-Americans on the roster. You know, we, we've been putting in some work, and I'm, I'm just excited for everybody to see what Ole Miss women's basketball is going to look like. Well, those of us with, with the old school programs, we're behind you 100%. We yeah, see sure. the work and the effort, and we know it's going to result in some good things. We can't wait. For sure. Thank you. All right, Coach Joe. Appreciate you. Okay. Thank you. Hey, when we come back, we're going to jump into football. We've got Wilson Love coming up next on Rev Talk. In sports, success is measured in the number of points scored, in games won, and in championships earned. At Shelter Insurance, we measure success in the quality of our products and services, in how we support our communities, in being there when you need us most. 
In fact, nine out of 10 people surveyed with a claim would recommend shelter to a friend. To find out how shelter can be there for you, visit shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Hi, this is Gant Boone with Oxford University Bank. You've heard about our Casasa Cash Checking Account paying 2.5% interest on balances up to $50,000. That interest could, depending on your balance, pay for an unlimited cell phone plan for you and one other, or pay for two gas fill-ups per month for an average-sized gas tank, or maybe a nice mint on the square is what you desire. Regardless, this is real money we will give you for doing three things you are probably already doing. So stop in today or visit us online at liveoxfordbankoxford.com, Oxford University Bank, member FDIC. Hey Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the VOT Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. For over 50 years, Mississippi Asthma and Allergies Board Certified Team of Allergists have treated patients in Mississippi by identifying triggers that cause patients trouble and creating personalized treatment plans. Now with offices in Jackson, Ridgeland, Meridian, D'Iberville, and Oxford, it's like we're right next door when you need us. Treating adults, infants, teens, and Ole Miss students. Find the Mississippi Asthma and Allergy Clinic near you at MSAAC.com. Mississippi Asthma and Allergy, helping Mississippi live life to the fullest. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Mom! Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. As we navigate the COVID-19 crisis, O'Reilly Auto Parts is dedicated to serving you. We've been deemed an essential business, so our doors will stay open. We encourage you to buy online, then pick up curbside. Together, we're committed to getting through this. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Rev Talk, here's David Callum. As we promised, we're going to visit now with head football strength and conditioning coach Wilson Love. We had a chance to meet Wilson a while back, talked about his bio and all that. So I'm skipping all that. We already know who you are now. But, uh, hey, you're smiling. Is there some good things going on in the building or what? <laughs> Hey, it's a blessing. I get to see the kids for the first time in three months. That that alone put a smile on anybody's face. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, by NCAA rules, I'm not allowed to ask you specifics about progress with individuals and all those things. And so uh, I get that. But just from a general sense, Wilson, uh, with them returning, you know, we talked about the plan several weeks ago about when they get back. You know, you sent stuff to them and tried to give them some help away from the facility. But I would think, uh, you know, coming back, there's got to be a big eagerness in the whole group. They've been, you know, cooped up in the house. Without a doubt. I mean, everybody has that excitement on their face because, I mean, they've been at the house with their parents and things like that. Well, a college kid wouldn't be ready to get back to, back to campus. But other than that, I mean, these guys know we're on a mission and we keep telling them, why not us? I mean, why not us? Why not Ole Miss? Why can't we be on top of the mountain? Why can't we work harder than anybody else get what, you, get what we want? So, that's what they're excited about because they know we have a championship mentality and we're not just going to be a team that just goes out there and plays on Saturday. We want to be a team that wants to be elite and show them every single Saturday how we can be as a program. And that starts in the summertime. You know, volunteer workouts, Wilson, through the years, just gotten better and better. It's, it's, it's like uh, more kids have bought in. They, they, they recognize the importance of it and, you know, how significant it is to being successful. Without a doubt. I mean, these kids know like we, we, got, we have work to do and we don't have much time. I tell them uh, on Monday, guys, we have 35 opportunities. Every single day, the goal is to go one and up. In the summer, you have to ask yourself, did you go 35 for 35? Did you go 34 for 35? We can't afford to lose a day because each and every day is a gift itself. So every day you have to go one and up because we don't have much opportunity. It ain't like the most summers in the past that you get more time. We're rock and rolling, baby. So we got to go. We got to get to work. You know, I talked to uh, uh, Dr. Crowther, talked to uh, Shannon Singletary and Dr. Valiant. And I didn't call you Dr. Love, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, but visited with them in this segment throughout the course of the new launch of Rev Talk. 
about uh, really cool things about, you know, the plan to come back and how to, to make it uh, work. Let me ask you about just the testing part of it mm -hmm. and getting in the door. You know, we did have a few cases, but seems like that we manage that as a staff pretty good. I'll say this, Shannon Singletary has done the best job and it is awesome working with him for everything. Him and Keith Carter, what they've done. It's been incredible what Shannon has allowed us to do as a staff with Pat Jernigan because Pat and I's relationship is one of the most important relationships of those. Athletic training and strength staff relationship is key. And Shannon has really opened that door for us to kind of think outside the box of how can we return this guy safely? But when we get this data that we use on them, how can we use it in the right ways? And Shannon's been incredible. I mean, we had a player assessment day to make sure we tested each body's, you know, left leg versus right leg strength. We did their force analysis. We did a hamstring analysis, a groin analysis. And we just sat there and made sure they're okay psychologically. And it, it was incredible, you know, just to get to do that. And I give a lot to Shannon Singletary and everything he's allowed us to do. It's been incredible. Well, it's uncharted water to a certain extent. That's for sure. I visited with Shannon about that. What is the plan, Wilson, now to, to move this – massive group as we head closer to when they have have their coaches with them and we get into you know real organized structured practice right for the next seven weeks i believe um they're just with the strength staff uh, it could be less than that maybe five i know the sec and then somebody kind of put out some new rules um later in july the coaches can start getting them again in class meetings and walkthroughs but that's later in july but till then it's just a strength staff and athletic training staff and I know the coaches are jealous, but I love it, baby. I get more time with them. <laughs> yeah, we it's saw that boy came on. They're bound to be no, jealous, no, no question right. about it. But uh, it's exciting times. And it looks like we're geared toward football coming back. And, of course, there's still some question marks to some degree. But, man, it sure would help things to get, to get football rolling again. No doubt. And we talk to the kids all the time. And, you know, with everything going on in the world right now, we just always tell them you're a person first and a football player second. Right. And, uh, I tell you what, I give a lot of credit to the previous staff. They've they've recruited some incredible kids here. I mean, kids who are so smart. And I, I I'm not going to name off who they are right now, but I mean, <laughs> we have some great kids, and it's incredible. You know what we did on Saturday for the march. We we're only going to do more. It's only the beginning. I told them that, guys. This this isn't the only thing we're ever going to do. This is just the beginning. Yeah, you know, and yeah. we'll be heard. So it's incredible. Freedom to to have a voice, I think is always right. important. And, you know, I'm going to talk to coach Yo, uh, or talk to coach Yo about it too. And I talk to Keith about it. And, uh, you know, I think that as, as we continue to move forward, supporting, uh, them and everything, and we, we kind of do that in athletics anyway, to some degree, but, uh, sometimes we'll let issues just kind of drift away and they, and they need to be, you know, focal points. Right. Without doubt, you know, enough's enough now. And, it really has affected our team and it's something we need to open up about and talk about, you know, and that's what we're going to do. And that's our promise to our kids that we're here for you. We're going to talk about it. And also I, and me too. I'm going to say, please, my players help me out too. Mm -hmm. coach me, you know, coach me, like let's be in this thing together. Um, and the best thing about athletics is everybody's kind of together. It's one, you know, one heartbeat, all this other stuff doesn't matter. And that's the beautiful thing about sports. You know, but I know when they go outside those walls, it's tough. It really is. You know, it's not easy for them. Um, so we have a support system for them. And it's been incredible so far. But my message to them is it's just getting started. You know, it's yeah, just okay. getting started. We're going to be all the time. Let me ask you this before I let you go. Uh, the the pandemic itself, we, we actually talked right. about this last time, I think, to some degree, is mm -hmm. going to give you a whole bunch of new stuff to deal with and process and what of this, and I think you've alluded to it, what of this will we carry over in the future, even when the pandemic is over? What kind of things have we learned that will help us, you know, in the future in just, uh, you know, dealing with our athletes' physical health and condition? I mean, it's kind of opened my eyes in general just because, you know, your body and how you take care of it and this cleanliness is, is so key. And, you know, that, that's one thing I've taken out of this, but just – this whole thing in general, just when anything happens, you know, you got to realize the players first, the health first, and then, then comes an athlete after that. But, you know, I've always said this. It was a blessing, too, because our kids and myself had to spend time with their family like they don't have. And, you know, it kind of made you rethink things. Like, I got to spend time with my wife more than I ever have before. 
And, you know, there's been a lot of positives with this COVID. And it's kind of maybe challenged certain things I've thought in the past as a straight coach. You know, maybe questioned certain things I've done. And we kind of, you know, redid it in a better way because we never had this time before. But, you know, a lot of things that bad have happened with this COVID. People have gotten sick. It has been a lot of horrible things. But just speaking for myself, you know, it's some positives have come out of it as well. Yeah, no doubt. Our wives may be ready for us to leave, though, at this point. Without a doubt. My wife kicked me right out. Good. Go you're back to your 4 a.m. wake up call every day. <laughs> she, she knows where your happy place is most of the time. But, but you know, you make a great point because I, 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 you talk to coaches and, you know, it's, it's a grind. All the sports are a grind. It's not just a grind during the season or prepping for a season. And, and sometimes right. family falls second and third, and it really shouldn't. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that a lot of coaches and a lot of people – in sports, if, if, if anything else, have discovered, you know, priorities, uh, the family's got to be up there. Without a doubt. And that's what I tell our kids, like, guys, you know, family always comes first. You know, like, it comes as user persons first. Like, with me, my wife's going to come first because that's my everything. That's my why. You know, and, but also, too, after that, you become a football player. You come to your training and all that. But family's always first. And you got to make sure family's good. We always tell our guys that. And, you know, they're incredible with it. It's been great so far. Well, I'm jealous too. I'm glad you're getting to hang out with them. You know, it's good to have them back on camp. I've seen them walking here and there. Right. And, uh, we just wish you the best and hopefully, you. you know, they stay totally committed and everything goes good. Thanks so much. Hopefully, I get my voice back. You know, I, I, I noticed know. that. I noticed that. I've had a, not, a really good two days. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not surprised about the voice thing. Not at all. <laughs> it's been good. Well, the whole string staff, everybody, you can't understand where we say we're all, we're all raspy right now. Just, we're just having a great time. All right. That's good. Wilson, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thank you. All have a great one. Okay. You too. Wilson Love. That wraps up Rev Talk this week. We'll see you next week.